Hey there, righteous people. Derek from Bomb Socks here with more Bomb Bites, where we feast upon the words of Christ and we do it one bite at a time. So today I want to focus on the one of the, I guess I should call it, the most important events to ever take place in the history of mankind, okay? And I really believe that the first vision is very much that. So um, I wanna just give you a little bit of context. I wanna back out and let you guys have a great experience with it. So just with a little context right here, um, I wanna introduce you to a guy by the name of the Reverend George Lane, okay? Now, George Lane, you probably don't know very well. George Lane may very well need to be thanked by every member of the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. So let me show you a little article right here. You can go to history.churchofjesuschrist.org and there's a lot of stuff out there that'll help you understand a little bit about church history as well. But this guy right here, George Lane, now let me read to you just right from here. Uh, it says, while Joseph Smith never mentioned George Lane in his histories, Others of Joseph's associates named Reverend Lang as being influential in Joseph's search. Oliver Cowdery wrote, one Mr. Lane, a presiding elder of the Methodist Church, this is maybe why Joseph was leaning towards the Methodists, visited Palmyra and the vicinity. Mr. Lane's manner of communication was peculiarly, that's a fun word to say, calculated to awaken the intellect of the hearer and arouse the sinner to look about him for safety. Much good instruction was always drawn from his discourses on the scriptures and in common with others, Joseph's mind became awakened. Now, many years later, Joseph's brother William remembered Joseph attending a meeting where George Lane addressed the question, what church shall I join? Using James 1.5 as a text, Reverend Lane urged his listeners to ask of God. If William's recollection is correct, Lane's sermon may have influenced Joseph as he sought direction. The sermons of preachers such as Jesse Townsend, who's also mentioned in this group, and George Lane undoubtedly contributed to the widespread religious excitement in Palmyra that we talked about last time in the years leading up to the first vision. During this period, Joseph listened to many preachers and after turning to the scriptures and much pondering, he determined to ask of God. And so that's why I say when, when I meet George Lane someday, I want to be like, hey, thank you. You know, I'm not trying to put him above Joseph in any way. But young Joseph was influenced by some of these religious preachers at the time, which leads him to verse number 11. 11 in Joseph Smith history, where he says, while I was laboring under extreme difficulties caused by the contest of these parties of religionists, I was one day reading the epistle of James, first chapter and fifth verse, which may have been suggested by George Lane, which reads, if any of you lack wisdom, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not, and it shall be given him. Now, I love this verse here. Never did any passage of scripture come with more power to the heart of man than this did at this time to mind. I really wonder if this verse was placed in the scriptures just for Joseph. Um, it seemed to enter with great force into every feeling of my heart. I reflected on it again and again, knowing that if any person needed wisdom from God, I did. For how to act, I did not know. And unless I could get more wisdom than I had had, I would never know. For the teachers of religion of the different sects understood the same passages of scripture so differently as to destroy all confidence in setting the question by an appeal to the Bible. Now, to back this up a little more, if you go to Saints chapter one, where it talks about ask in faith, look what this says here. It says, while attending a sermon, again, it never mentions a specific sermon, but it could have very well been this Jesse Townsend or this George Lane. Joseph heard a minister Quote from the first chapter of James in the New Testament. If any of you lack wisdom, he said, let him ask of God that give it to all men liberally and upbraideth not. Joseph went home and read the verse in the Bible. He had searched the Bible before as if it held all the answers. But now the Bible was telling him he could go directly to God for personal answers to his questions. Joseph decided to pray. He had never prayed out loud before, but he trusted the Bible's promise, ask in faith, nothing wavering. It taught. God would hear his questions, even if they came out awkwardly. I love that phrase. I mean, what person, you know, when, when we pray to God, there's so many times where we feel probably, I know I myself, where you just feel awkward. It's like the words that you are using as you are approaching God seem so odd. We just don't know what to say. And I really, I love that phrase. It's like, 
God would hear his questions, even if they came out awkwardly. So with that in mind, I'd like you to go in, and I'm going to back out after this and just let you guys have a wonderful experience as a family or as an individual. You can you can write in your journal. How, I don't care how you do it, but I would invite you to have an experience with the first vision here. In fact, David O. McKay, years ago, look at this quote from David O. McKay. If you will read the account of the first vision every month of your life, you will never fall away from the church. That's a bold statement, but it's from a prophet of God, and I'm okay with that. And if you think about it, it makes total sense. If you were to read the first vision, and you read it with an open heart, and you read it with that sincerity and the desire to learn and grow, um, yeah, I don't think you're ever going to fall away from the church. So today, let's take care of January 2021, okay? Here's the first month where you can do that in your life. Uh, I'd like you to go through and just read Joseph Smith History 1. 11 through 19 and go through and just see in fact one of the one of the things i would ask you to do is read this as if you were searching for truth what things did joseph do that that led him to truth what what practices did he do what were some things that he really did here look for verbs look for action words that joseph did and as you do that you're going to have a great experience with this and i'd even love to hear if you're if you'd like to if you're willing uh in the comment section of either facebook or instagram or youtube Put in, maybe focus on words, focus on maybe some words that Joseph did or things that stood out to you that can help you and I today through all of this. So anyway, I hope that helps you guys out. Enjoy your study of the first vision today. And, and I can testify to you that what happened in that grove that day is absolutely true. I know that. Anyway, you guys are great. Thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. And thanks for sharing these messages. We will see you tomorrow. Godspeed. See ya. Bye-bye.